Hi everyone, it's me, and uh, we're going to be, I wanted to show you, or we'll share with you, one of my IFR lessons, because I haven't done much in the IFR playlist yet, um, so my instructor here wanted to record the video f and um, the briefing, so I thought this would be a cool little thing to share. Um, so as I'm sitting up here, I'm just explaining what's going on. Um, so. This is going to be a short 10 minute recap of the uh, flight. It was exactly one hour. So we'll carry on from here. So the interesting part about IFR is it can be a gorgeous day, scenery, flights and everything. I don't get to see any of it. The first time I get to see it is the same time that you get to see the video. Uh, this video you'll see in the view of this safety pilot, uh, my instructor. Uh, I am going to be completely under the hood, so we're going to go ahead and jump straight to that. Stability one zero, nine hundred thousand scattered. Temperature seven, two point minus one. Altimeter two nine hundred eight seven. Visual. To verify Cessna six eight two two nine or three two nine. Final lights out of service. Exiting north of runway six two four close. Cessna six eight three two nine on sound clearance. Say request. Approaches to multiple runways in progress. Hi, Buzz. Come back to you, Mike. Hey, I'm Ali. Can I show you information, Mike? 1751 Zulu. Wind 210 at 8. Visibility 10. 900,000 scattered. Temperature 7. 2 point minus 1. Altimeter 2. 987. Visual approach. 24 in use. Another airman. Runway 624 sound lights out of service. Taxi back north of runway 624 closed. Use caution, birds in the vicinity of the airport. Approaches to multiple runways in progress. Okay, uh, I have information, Mike. Mike. So today's lesson is going over what we did in lesson four uh, in discovering and dealing with partial panel, which is exactly what it says. Now, when he decided to block the panel, uh, my mind went elsewhere for a brief second, and um, I'm going to edit the video, so just as he does what he did, you'll see what my mind was thinking of. Okay, um, uh, full checklist, take off fuel tank, switch in, fuel pump on, fuel pressure is good, switch into the way. The thing that we're going to be doing here that I asked him to show me is how to do a step because of one experience that I had during my driving pilot training, I am constantly aware of it during the colder months of Pennsylvania weather and I'm applying it to my additional run-up checklist. Making sure that the plane can get up to maximum wear, uh, revs before we try a takeoff. And so here he showed me how to do a static check, uh, static, okay. static check. All right, let's do a static check, hold. Uh... All right, bring it back. Yeah, it's a little cool. So that's how you check for max revs. Okay. Cherokee 32177, wind 190 at 11, fly runway heading runway 24 at Alpha 1, click for takeoff. If I take off runway 24, Cherokee 32177. 2000, 3 green. Ahead of us, so. Speed is alive. Sixty. Early today. Looks good. We got three three zero. Ah, a little windy. What's that? A little windy. It's good though. Check three two one seven seven. Contact departure. Good day. Contact departure one seven seven. Have a good day. Allen Town departure. Cherokee three two one seven seven. Leaving one thousand for three thousand. Flying one right here. Cherokee three two one seven seven. Allen Town departure. Radar contact. Turn right on course. Advise on station. 
Right, uncles, advise on station 177. So immediately, as I'm getting myself established, I'm starting my scan. I was focusing on all six uh, of the six back. And soon I know he's going to fail two of my instruments. Got into the clouds and now your instruments have failed. No panic! Okay, so no, that wasn't a serious panic, it's more in jest. When I heard him and I saw the office of patches, I was thinking of Cobble Jones and yeah. Don't panic, three, don't Papa panic. Romeo, direct, Troxel, <laughs> you can take me out of it, Romeo, but you can't Oscar, take British Lima, Lima, Troxel, direct Yardley. Maintain 6,000 for now. What just failed? The uh, vacuum, the gyro. Good. So yeah, you heard him ask me what fell and I was able to decide so it. Remember, so right? it's a different it's concept because you were focusing on turn, the pattern of the quiz crossing, I was focusing on the primary and support radials, what I needed to establish the thirdly tree that was gone. And suddenly you have to look up to the compass. And I was cautious because I know every time I look up the compass, uh, at the compass, I could see to to the right. outside of the window and the compass was a few hours To keep yourself honest, you know. Of that. Yeah. Okay, so, um, because it's flat. Three Papa Romeo, direct okay. Troxel, yeah. Tango, Romeo, Oscar, X-Ray, so Lima, TRO, Turn XL, just a little bit to the right, just a little, just a little bit, maybe three seconds. And then flatten it out again, right? Yeah. Obviously, the turn coordinator has to be solid, flat, okay? Because it's not your turning. Remember, the turn coordinator is the only thing that's going to tell you whether you're turning or not. Yes. Right? Also, keep in mind that we're climbing or not, uh, accelerate, we're accelerating, so... Uh, well, that's going to affect the compass, too. It does. But remember, you still got to get that right rudder in there, because if not, it's going to turn a little bit to the left. Yeah. There you go. Now, this is some good training. Yes. All right, because it's definitely teaching you a little bit of a, a what's going on in this in, in the criteria, right? Yes. So what he means by that Once is, uh, up until right, now, it's three been three very seconds. basic. Three um, seconds. Yep. This lesson four and lesson five, it starts One, to get a little two, bit busier. Three, you got more to do, and uh, they right walk you right into in getting complicated with the advanced scanning. And you got to look at the tachometer, which if you, if you have to include that in the scan, why do they put it all the way down near your knee instead of up near the six pack? And then they should be like you said later, the two VOR pads and the GPS that you got to include in the scan. And remember, I'm not seeing anything outside of the window. I'm relying on him entirely to keep us safe. Now, get to cruise speed, then you can take the power away. Use your nine jelly pop out. Use your power center. Two hundred eighty-five or five hundred RPM should be a nice, perfect time, right? Yeah. Watch your altitude, keep your scan. Departure November 3. Cherokee 901 Whiskey, contact writing approach 125.15. Good day. 901 Whiskey, up to writing 125.15. Thank you. Good day. What do you got? North, okay? Yeah. Not bad. You're about commander. 10 degrees off, but. It's good, right? Yeah. Hello, camera. Hello, camera. <laughs> like I said, you can't All right, take good. British so humor. We're going to turn. Now, since we're in the heading of north, right? Yeah. We're going to turn 180 degrees to the left. Okay. That's 180 degrees. What's the time for that? So, uh, yeah, this video is going to go a little bit longer than 10 minutes, but I wanted to show you a time turn oh, because I, head, until I experienced it, yeah. I well, didn't yeah, really understand the, the books. The books explain yeah, that, turning turning a little like, bit to okay, the left. I basic it, oh, yeah, but yeah. it isn't until you actually yeah, do the most it that you thing fully about understand, so that's why I want to include it. This is a time turn when you don't have your altitude indicator or your DG. Okay. Now, this is the timer here. You start, stop, and you clear it. Okay. So 180 to the left. Yep. Turn first and then start. Okay. There you go. Because it's la it lags a little bit to change headings. 
Yeah, once you start, you get into a standard return, it should be turning by now, then you should start. What are you, doesn't that change when you turn in south? Watch your, watch out. Number three, Papa Romeo, contact. Philadelphia approach 123.8. So uh, let me explain what we did. Um, it is when you don't have your DG or your attitude indicator, you know that a full 360 at a standard weight takes two minutes to go a complete circle. 180 is one minute. So we set up the function on the uh, transponder to count up. As we start the turn, we start the timer. So when we get to 30 seconds or one minute, we should be where we were exactly. The initial confusion that I was having is because I know you undershoot north and overshoot south. Uh, so I, because we was going to go turn to the south, I thought you would have Evaluate. to press stop before now. you do the turn to count for south. the overshoot. The money, right? Yeah. Perfect. So, so yes. Um, once again, right? Time turns? Yes. That's great. It looks awesome. Right. Uh, let's just try to keep that constant scan going, and try not to change too much the power settings. Okay. Okay. Um, two, just zero, zero. change your attitude a bit. Change altitudes. Okay. okay. I know you might you might increase about ten knots, but whatever. I mean, uh, he's not going to ding you too much. Zero, more, zero, there is traffic at your okay. two o'clock, five miles eastbound, thirty-five All right. miles. Now, seven. since you're in the south, give me a heading of. Zero nine zero. Three two nine traffic ten o'clock five miles uh, down, three thousand series. Zero nine zero. First time to fluke. Okay, Second time you've so mastered it. Thirty seconds. I return first, then okay. start time. Bam. So rely more on the seconds than the actual change in headings in your magnetic compass, because the magnetic compass is unreliable right now. Yeah. Evaluate and see what happens. Let's let her calm down a little bit. good yeah trying to come back right yes it is there you go definitely climbed up up there oh, right? zero, zero, five, right? Understood. Thanks. right the partial panel definitely is kicking your butt yes <laughs> <laughs> it's all right it's all right so Two all right. Seven, seven traffic and three miles north so yeah i even though i had one lesson before on it and i was okay it was a couple of weeks so i was rusty this was shaking the rust off my flight skills and yeah, it was um, hard. Um, it dis it messes you up when you lose those two um, after you take them off. We just went ahead and did a power off and power on stall, uh, and then headed back to Allentown to land. Um, AFL flight training, I really strongly recommend anyone to do because it increases your own personal safety as a private pilot just a thousand fold like if they included some of this inside of the student pilot more than what they do I would wager that it would keep most student pilots or private pilots alive and it is it's time turns and factoring turns it's it's a whole separate ball game. The initial training is hard, but and everything else on after it is easier. IFR is hard for its own separate reasons, and I, I think we can be say that we um, we can see why that is in this video. It demonstrates it crystal clear to me so I um, I'm really blessed that I got an awesome instructor here who takes his time and explaining stuff um, so if you're lucky to you'll get there and have someone there but I really do recommend anyone to just even if you don't intend to go for a ticket room in part 61 ask to do a little bit of IFR training just so you can keep yourself alive if you accidentally go into IMC conditions because what's in the curriculum under student uh, private pilot curriculum is not enough to keep you alive in my opinion and that is just my opinion 
So, I guess I'm gonna end the video here because it's long enough. It's approaching 15 minutes. Uh, the full video is 46 minutes long. Uh, I could publish that to later if I get permission, but uh, I only got permission to do like a short 10 minute video. So, I'm already five minutes over. So, I guess thank you, and I will catch you next time.